Hi guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, a bit of an unscheduled tie this one, but um, Richard Slater got in touch with me and was asking about how I cloak my dabblers. So I said I would do my best to get a video out for them and here it is. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vise then is a Hanak H260 barbless hook, it's at size 8 and it's a heavy wire hook in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Vivis, it's GSP, it's 50 denier and as you can see it's a plain white thread. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, get plenty of wax onto my thread. Now normally I would always put a little blob of super glue onto the shank of the hook but that's gone absent without leave, so I'm going to have to make do with wax this time round. So I'm going to catch in just behind the eye and I'm going to run my thread along the shank to approximately where a barb would be on a barbed hook. And I'm going to stop there and remove my waist. Okay, next I'm going to add a little tag to this fly. I'm going to be using the glow bright number three. As you can see, it's uh, the red floss. I've already taken a small piece off, and what I want to do is just catch that in, and then I'm going to bring my thread up to secure it, and then I'm going to run it approximately, not quite to the apex of the thread. Uh, sorry, the bend of the hook, but not far off it. So I've got to there. I can bring my thread all the way to the front just to keep it out of the way. Now, a little tip that's been passed on to me by one of the subscribers in the channel is if you open up your vise, if you've got that facility, and turn it on its side, like so, it's, it's a lot easier to work with your tag. Uh, because you can see exactly where your hook point is so you're not um, just having to wiggle round it all the time uh, it's a great tip and I've just started doing it I do take what um, you know the comments I get back on the videos I always take them on board and uh, I learn as much from you guys telling me when I'm getting stuff wrong as I do from anyone else actually so I'm just catching that in, making sure I've got the colour nice and thick at that end and then I can bring it up the shank and just meet my tie thread again now while I've got it in this position actually I'm going to add a small amount of UV resin now what this does is it brightens up the tag and just makes it stand out a little bit more for the fly. So I've just caught that side. I'll just release my vice back to normal and just make sure you get good coverage all round your tag. And that should do the job. Next come in with your pen and cure that off now I say uh, the title of this is um, a traditional dabbler but there's probably not very much traditional about it it's, it's ish, it's a traditional ish dabbler is how I would describe it so next what I'm going to do is take one of my large feathers from this red cock cape, it's been dyed red, lovely colour and as you can see here I've got some quite long fibres there so I'm going to take approximately a dozen of the fibres and rip them off the stalk and tie them in. Now I want them to be about two centimetres in length so that looks okay, I'm going to hold it into place and bring my thread 
down. That looks okay. Now I'll just remove the waist at the front here. Now with, with this kind of fly, it's always good practice to get plenty of wax on your thread. So uh, I'm pretty guilty actually of not doing that. I keep meaning to, while I've got all this time on my hands with the COVID um, lockdown, I keep meaning to do the old Davy McPhail trick, but I've still not got round to it. So next, I'm going to add my dabbler tail. So how I do this, I'm going to pull the feathers up about a centimetre and a half and pull them out. And what I'm looking to do is just make sure all these tips are aligned. And once I've done that, I can pull that away. What I want to do next is just take with my right hand and roll it in half so that I'm getting my feather. Any erroneous fibres you can remove then dress that up to the hook and it wants to be a millimetre or two just past the red. So I'll catch that there. Just have a quick look. Yeah, that looks okay. And I can bring my thread up a little bit before just coming in to remove my waist there. Okay, so far so good. Just lock the rest of that down. Now before I come back up, I'm going to catch in my wire rib. I've already got a piece here, and what it is is the Venyard number 27, and it's a small silver rib. So I'll catch that in all along the length of the fly until I reach my tag end. Now, I'm also going to put in another rib and it's going to be the Beavis Pearl P01. It's a medium pearl uh, Lurex material and I'm going to catch that in on my side just a couple of turns it takes and then come back to the base of the fly. For the body I'm going to be using some of the uh, the Trout Stalker dubbing and this flavour is Highland Peat. Just take a bit out the, out the packet. Now, uh, makes a great, great body dubbing this. It's got red, yellows, blues, black. It's, it's just, uh, and it's really nice to work with. So I'm just dubbing that onto my thread now. And I'm going to stop there. I can always add some more if I need to. And wrap that up the shank of the hook. And that's worked out just about perfect actually. I'm pleased, pleased with that. So I'll just put the rest of that to the side. Now, so I've got that looking pretty tidy. I'll just give it another couple of wraps to lock it into place. So next I'm going to bring up my pearl rib and I'm going to bring it towards me and I want to have at least three turns in this. The fourth turn won't matter because the wing will uh, inevitably cover that up. So I've got that locked in. Just getting a couple of threads, I don't know, my bobbin seems to be slipping a bit, which uh, if you've got too much thread out, you're not in control. So always try and keep as much of the thread on the bobbin as you can. So once you've got your turns in, you can remove the waste. Okie dokie. So far so good. Now before I go on, I'm just going to pick out some of the dubbing. You don't need to do this, but I like to just pick out a little bit while it's like that. So that's looking pretty good. Next then, I'm going to use, uh, for my palm mark, I'm going to use this um, grizzle cape. It's been dyed black and I've already pre-selected a feather. 
and as you can see I've trimmed away a bit of the stock. Now I'm just going to add a bit more wax to my thread. Always good when you're uh, tying in Palmer tackles. So I can catch that in and run it up to where I want it. Now a tip with Palmer in is if you if you pull this stalk and just get one turn in behind what you get is your your, um, your feather will sit at a 90 degree angle out to the hook and that just makes the whole palmering um, a lot easier so I might get away with just using my fingers here I just reached for my hackle pliers but I don't think I'm going to need them so there's one and I'm going to do another turn virtually on top of that one before I start coming down my body and then as I get to the end I can pick up my rib and I'm going to bring it around the base of the hook and then start catching in. Now you can weave weave your rib in through the hackles if you can. Don't lose any sleep if you're uh, catching some of these fibres into, into the body. It's not going to make a great deal of difference to this fly. So just bring it up nice and smooth and then catch that in with your thread. Now once you've caught it in with a few turns get a couple of wraps in front and then you can twist away your thread and don't forget to remove your tag. There we go. So far so good. Okay Right, let's take stock. So I just want to tidy up the front a little bit and come just in front of my black hackle. Now before I do anything else, again, I'm adding more wax. Yeah, try and be diligent with this if you can. And next, I'm going to take one of the smaller feathers from this cock cape. Uh, they take a bit of finding, I've already searched one out prior to starting and I've got it here and I've also created a little tag which is a little too big so I'll just trim that slightly and I'm going to come in with my thread and just capture the tag in then that can come all the way back and you're almost exactly where you finished with your black. Now on this occasion I am going to use the hackle pliers uh, just to grab that red feather. It's just to add a little splash of colour in into the fly. And it's trying like ten men to to blend into the black there. I want to get at least a couple of turns and once I've got two turns, I'm going to catch the stem of that in and lock it down. Again, get in front of your, uh, your feather and you can remove your waist. Okay, it's not looking too shabby. And all the way, just trying to catch these little, little bits that are in the way and bend the feather back so it sits like that. So I'm fairly happy with that so far. Again, before I move on to the next stage, plenty of wax on the thread. 
Now, there's a couple of ways you can do your um, your cloaking. The, the um, more experienced tyres, and I don't count myself amongst them, would, would suggest that you leave it exactly as it is in the vise, take off uh, two slips of bronze mallard. Now, I'm going to do that part. So I'm going to take off about just over a centimetre. So separate it out. Try and make sure all your tips are in a line. Once you've done that, just rip it away. Now, I'm going to put that down, face down, and then I'm going to grab about the same again. So I'll pull that out. Again, just about a centimetre's worth. Get it all out so you've got your fibres out at a 90 degree angle, and then pull it away. So once you've done that, what I like to do is put the two wrong sides together. But before I do anything else, I'm going to invert my vise. And then let me have a go at this for you. Very difficult to do on camera, I would think. So I've got it here, and I'm just going to try and marry these two up. Bear with me. So the important thing here is you marry the tips together. Now, lengthwise, I want it no, no longer than where the bend of the hook apex is. Now, also, because I've got this cock hackle here, it won't sit. It won't sit particularly well for me. So what I'm going to do is just split my throat hackles in two. Sometimes it, it just comes apart naturally for you, other times it is a pain. And this would be the latter. Okay, so as you can see, I've kind of got a V shape going on there. So I'm going to slip that in to place using the thumb and forefinger of my left hand I'm clamping down on that now my, my threads heavily waxed so it should hold it all into place I'm going to get three lock and turns in position and then I'm going to have a look at what I've got so if I open my vice up that looks okay and it looks okay on my side. So what I can do next is come in with my snips and simply remove that waste. Be very careful at this point. You don't want to cut your throat hackles and you definitely, definitely don't want to cut your thread or the giant pillow will be sodden that night. Okay, so that's looking not too bad. I'm just going to tidy up my cut ends, not too much, just get them out of the way of the eye. Then I can invert my vise back to its natural position. Okay, the next one then is similar. I've got myself a, the last of my bronze mallard actually. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take slightly more than I took for the the throat hackle and I just want to pull them out I'm going to lay it down on my vise I know it's off camera but that's all I've done and then I'm going to do about the same I'm not blessed with good uh, bronze mallard at the minute but hopefully I'll be changing that. I made an order today, so hopefully the next time I demonstrate a dabbler, it will be a bit better, a bit easier for me as well. So I've got my two slips now. And like I did with the throat hackle, I just want to marry up the tips, really. That's what I'm interested in here. And there's, there's quite a bit of faffing going on. Uh, it's probably out of focus, but... 
trust me when I tell you I am farting. In fact, you know what, I'm going to take away there. And then I'm going to try just marry up them tips a little bit better. Now it's not perfect by any stretch, but it is not too bad. I can live with it. So what I'm going to do next is show up to the hook. Now notice, and this is the thing that people don't do, I've got about half an inch breadth here and I need that for this. So what I want is it to come not quite as far as the end of the tail but about halfway. So I'm going to show that up to the hook. That looks good. Then with my thumb and forefinger I'm going to come over and envelope the eye of the hook. So what's happened now is I've pinched it around the hook to cloak the entire thing. Then when I come in with my thread get a few wraps in place See how it's all looking, see how it's sitting, it's not too bad, let me have a look at your side, yeah, that's cloaked that quite nicely. So I'm just going to add a little bit more wax, and then I can hopefully come in, excuse my fingers, and remove my waist. Like so. Now, once you've done that, we're on the home straight. So, what you've got to do is get all this, your cut ends tidied up. Like so. Okay, and because I've used the wax, it's, it's sitting lovely now. It's just perfect. Okay. Now, I don't want to leave my uh, dabbler with a, a white head. So I'm going to use this Pro Marker here in black to colour up some of my Beavis thread. It takes colour, no problem this. So I'll just get that coloured up and I'll also add a tiny spot on the head just to help it on its way. Right. Now, let's just get this head finished. That's looking pretty good. Now before I go on, I'm going to add a little bit of UV resin to my thread, just to help finish it off. And then I can come in with my quick finish tool. Again, remove your waist and before you cure it just make sure that you've cleared your eye there's nothing worse than uh, putting a lot of work into a fly and then you've blocked all the eye up and you can cure it with your pen like so and for my money, I would, I would give this a good drenching under the tap, brush it all out, and it would go straight in the box. But as I am going to be taking some photographs of this later, I'm just going to give it another coat with a varnish to make sure it looks good for the camera. Everyone likes to look their best in photos, even the dabblers. Again, just before I cure it, I'm going to make sure I've not got any, any UV resin stuck in there, then I can cure that off.
and there we have it. Um, I hope that's been of some use to you. A few different techniques going on there. It might not be to everyone's um, taste, but that's how I, I do my fully cloaked dabblers. Um, thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about doing so now. It really makes a big difference to me. See you all next time.